1995, I turned 50, so you can do the math. I'm on Social Security now. Anyhow, um, that year, a special dog was born named Freya. As my doctor was telling me that I had lost 95% of my vision because of glaucoma, which was misdiagnosed for five years, but, uh, Freya was being conceived and born. I left my home after finding out, whoops, have a seat. You know the routine. You're the star. <laughs> Anyhow, after I found out from my doctor what my diagnosis was, I went home, and at that time I was a drug and alcohol counselor for Sierra Council of Alcoholism and Drug Dependence at Lake Tahoe. What a place to be a drug and alcohol counselor, huh? <laughs> well, I went home immediately and called rehab for the county of Nevada, Nevada County. And I asked them, are there any programs for visually handicapped people? And they said, oh yeah, Carol, there's a wonderful program in Albany, California called Orientation Center for the Blind. I said, how soon can I get there? And they said, well, you'll have to be interviewed. So my husband and I got in our car and came to uh, Albany. And the CEO said to me, how long have you been blind? I said, well, I'm not really, really sure, but I know I stopped driving about six months ago because my daughter said I was going to hit people. And I said, and when I go to the store to find medication, there's just too many brands to pick from. Well, they, the CEO said to me, so you're just recently blind? I said, yes, I think so. He said, well, you can't come. I said, well, why can't I? He said, well, you need to get used to being blind. And I said, oh, okay. So I went home and called rehab back, and they said, well, we'll get you used to being blind. So they came to my house and set up everything for me as a handicapped person. Thank you, Volley. Six months later, I called the CEO, and I said, I think I'm blind now. <laughs> and I think I can do it. And he said, well, okay, I will enroll you. It was a nine-month experience living away from home. And on the weekends, every couple of weeks, I'd try and fly home to surprise my husband with what I was learning. And it was very frightening to him because I would say, I don't need your help with that. And he would say, but? And I said, well, you know, I've always been an independent woman. Please don't. Let me try and do things on my own. Well, he did, and so, of course, I would jump off the curb and fall down, and he'd say, okay, can I help you now? Nope, I'll get myself up. Well, after uh, being at orientation center for the blind for a while, which is a school that teaches you new living skills. Simple things like sewing with a sewing machine blindfolded. Using a huge professional saw to cut wood blindfolded. All these things I learned that I didn't ever think I'd use. But I did become a blind quilter and have been in several different quilt groups. Anyhow, while I was at Orientation for Center for the Blind, I had an opportunity to visit Guide Dogs for the Blind. And my first step off the bus was met with the friendliest people that one has ever met. They took us on a tour of Guide Dogs. Of course, we're all blind. We don't know what we're seeing. <laughs> but we know it smells good there, and we can smell dogs. And it was rather interesting. I immediately called my husband and said, guess what? You need to come down this weekend. They're having a graduation at Guide Dogs for the Blind. Bring two boxes of Kleenex. <laughs> How many of you have been to a graduation? Is that enough Kleenex? OK. So I told him that I would like to come to this school when I finish at Orientation Center for the Blind. And he said, oh, no, 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 no. You've been gone nine months. 
You need to come home for a while so we can get to know each other again. Well, I did. I came home for a couple of weeks, and guide dogs came to visit me, and they took me walking. And by the way, I, I didn't tell you I was living at Lake Tahoe there, or then, and I was close to Highway 89. And so when I came to the curb, I said to the instructor, hold my husband back because he thinks he needs to lead me across the street. So the instructor said, okay. So he held Pat back walking slowly and I got to the, cur the uh, end of the street and I listened for the traffic and I had my white cane and as I walked out, my husband had a heart attack. <laughs> and he said, stop her. And he said, why? He said, well, because she's gonna walk out into traffic. He said, and she didn't look both ways. <laughs> he said, she listens for the traffic. All those things were hard for Pat to get used to. It was a whole different change of life for him. One of these days, I'm gonna put a blindfold on him like you had, Ken and see if he'll listen for the traffic. Okay, <clears throat> I went to guide dogs for the blind. The food is outstanding. <laughs> I mean, for a good, good dinner. My husband on the way home from guide dogs stopped at In-N-Out Burger. <clears throat> Excuse me, I had prime rib. It was wonderful. Anyhow, the first three days at Guide Dogs for the Blind is you're being interviewed to be matched up with a dog that will fit your pace and your personality. And when they brought Freya to me, my first guide dog, please sit down. When they brought Freya to me, she was a skinny 65 pound, raring to go Labrador retriever. Well, so was Volley at that when I got her. And I do need to tell you that I told her when we were asked to speak that she'd have to lose some weight. <laughs> she lost seven pounds, I gained 10. <laughs> Anyhow, with, Vol with Freya, I asked them, how did you pick this particular dog for me? They said, well, she's very aloof. And she's laid back. Oh, opposites attract, I said. <laughs> Anyhow, it was a perfect relationship. I do realize now that I may have worked Freya a little longer being my first dog. She worked 10 years for me. When she retired, she had arthritis in her spine. I had not been without Freya for 10 years. She was constantly my companion. And when Pat and I went down in our RV and he was dropping me off and I took her harness off, it was the first time that I realized that she would now be Pat's companion and I'd be getting a new guide dog. Well, you know, it's like having your first child. You just know the second one's just gonna be as good as the first one. Then I met Volley. And believe it or not, Volley wasn't a thing like Freya. Volley had to be the first off the bus. Volley was the fastest walking dog in the class. Look at me. <laughs> I mean, really. <laughs> Anyhow, and she, she didn't bark, but she wooed at 6.30 every morning, which meant get up, feed me. <laughs> she wasn't laid back at all, but what joy she brought to our home. Freya lived to be 16, so she had Volley in her life for four years. Because as you know, you receive your guide dog when they're two, and I did the math before I came here. But anyhow, Volley got Freya to be so energized, she was like a different person or a different dog. She was just running and jumping and playing. And I'm like, no, you're guide dogs. You're supposed to be laid back, reserved. Well, anyhow, she had the best fun for her last four years of life. 
We put Freya down last year in November. It was truly the most emotional time I've ever had in my life. A month later, one month and one day later, my mother died. And I thought, I had shed so many tears for Freya that I didn't know if I had enough left. But you know what? There's always a reserve. There is always a reserve. So Mom and Freya, this talk is for you. I want you to know in conclusion that guide dogs has been a significant part of my life ever since the first day I stepped my foot on those grounds. I've been a guest speaker several times in Reno, Nevada for Friends of Guide Dogs. Freya and Molly and I have traveled. We've flown. People always say, Mom, there's a dog on the plane. And I always say, really, where? (laughs) Anyhow, it was no coincidence that when I lost my vision, Freya was being trained to be my eyes. It was no coincidence that Orientation Center for the Blind introduced me to guide dogs for the blind. It was no coincidence that Freya knew her time of being my companion was up before I knew it. And there definitely was no coincidence that Volley was being trained at that time to be my new guide dog. It's been an adventure. It's been life-changing. It's been a wonderful, wonderful ministry. And if you know anyone, anyone, who would love to have a guide dog, but they're scared, they're frightened, because you walk so fast, (laughs) there's nothing better than a guide dog versus a cane, and that's in my world. But I would be willing to talk to anyone who would who has a fear but would love to have a guide dog. And Volley would woo them all the way into it. Good night. Come on, Volley. <laughs> Forward. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's amazing.